This build features a Jones Plus long wheelbase, tie space frame, size medium, and matching tie truss fork. The wheel sets are 29 inch 45mm WTB KOM light rims running tubeless with 29 by 3.25 inch V tire bulldozers. Bars are Jones 710mm carbon loop H bars with Jones Craton grips. The drivetrain is a SRAM GX Eagle. The crank set is 170mm 32 teeth. The cassette is 12 speed 10 to 50 teeth. Brakes are Shimano XC M8000 hydraulic disc brakes. The front rotor is 203mm, the rear rotor is 180mm. The seat post is Thompson Elite Zero Offset, and the saddle is WTB Speed Pro. The bike weighs approximately 27.5 pounds, and the built tuned package price quoted from Jones was $7,365. I received this bike just over six months ago and I wanted to share my thoughts on the build and the ride. The one word that could summarize the ride is comfortable. Climbs, descents, switchbacks, long grinds on pavement, gravel, or single track, this bike remains comfortable. But don't mistake this for meaning the bike can't perform. I would say it performs just as well as it is comfortable. Thanks to Jeff's design of the frame and H-bars, you can always revert back to a comfortable, balanced, upright position on the bike, even while descending. You can certainly lean forward when needed, but you are never forced into a forward leaning position due to bar position. And when descending on a steep downhill, you can drop your back end far behind the seat and still retain full control and one finger braking. The design of this bike has already saved me multiple times where I would have certainly gone over the bars on a conventional mountain bike. The 45 degree sweep of the bars gives the rider very precise control. This might not occur to someone who has not tried the bars yet who might consider them cruiser bars, but once you have used these bars for a little while, there's no going back. Additionally, the carbon bars absorb rough ride incredibly well. I have aluminum bars on my 2015 Jones Plus, and I definitely notice a night and day difference in hand and forearm fatigue between the aluminum and carbon bars. I would advise anyone on the fence about upgrading to carbon to do it. You will not regret it. Jones has a bunch of videos discussing the frame and H bars at length, so I won't go too far into any more detail on those go check out his videos. I've taken my 2015 Jones Plus to the Mount Bachelor Bike Park in Central Oregon multiple times, and it rips up there. Though it wasn't a great ride on rocky black diamonds, as you might expect any fully rigid bike to be, the bike excelled on the flow trails. The body positioning on this space frame is identical to that of the Plus, so I have no doubt that this bike will perform similarly up there, and I'm looking forward to bringing this bike up there as soon as the park is opened. I might put some kind of video together of that ride when it happens, if only for the comments from people saying how ridiculous it is to ride a fully rigid bike at a downhill bike park. The V bulldozers are great tires. I don't measure my tire pressure. I just go by feel, usually adding some air before a long climb and letting some out before a descent. Too much air on the descent and I feel the bumps and slide around noticeably more on loose trails. Letting some air out provides for a very comfortable ride which is aided by the carbon bars. I loved the Bone Traeger Chupacabra tire that I had on the rear of my 2015 Jones Plus when I got it, and was completely disappointed in the WTB Ranger that replaced it. The V bulldozers are just as good as the Chupacabra. The WTB KOM light rims are good, but they don't allow for the tires to reach their advertised 3.25 inch width. Just looking from photos, the Jones carbon rims appear to add the extra quarter inch to the tire width, making the tires look massive. These WTB rims don't give it quite as beefy of a look, but the thinner profile also means less chain rubbing while on the lowest gear. It isn't too noticeable on this build, but it happens. The tires perform well on loose gravel, snow, mud, dust, and they're a little bumpy on pavement. They don't seem to be wearing down nearly as fast as the WTB Rangers. I will have no problem buying a new set when these ones wear out. If I recall, Jeff has been choosing the Avid BB-8 mechanical brakes for his personal bikes lately, but I'm a huge fan of the Shimano XT hydraulic brakes, so I went with those. They are wonderful brakes. Not much more to say on them. The SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain shifts and works well. I'm not a mechanic, so I can't provide much feedback on a technical level here. I was glad to simplify down to a single derailleur with this build, and the 12 chainring cassette gives me an easy climb and pretty fast descent. In all honesty, it would be nice to be able to get a little faster on long road descents, but I don't ride much road anyways, so I can live with what I have here for now. 
I will say that I miss the rapid fire shifting ability on the Shimano XT shifters that are on my 2015 Jones Plus, and I think the overall shifting with the Shimano's is smoother. But Shimano didn't have a 1x12 option, and SRAM nailed the aesthetics with this one. I ride single track for the most part, and fire road when I need to, so that is my background in riding. I have owned full suspension Santa Cruz, Specialized, and Trek mountain bikes in the past, and I really don't see the need to ever go back to those unless I got into road racing or aggressive downhill riding. This bike handles 95% of everything I ride so well, it doesn't even make sense to hold on to any other kind of bike. Occasionally I'll be on the road for work and will rent a mountain bike, and I feel so unbalanced and uncomfortable it's almost not worth it. I feel Jeff Jones has really perfected bike design because he has optimized comfort versus performance. While his bikes are aesthetically pleasing, that seems to be a byproduct and doesn't really fall into consideration until comfort and performance have been maximized. He's all about making the best tool for the job, and with this titanium space frame, I think he nailed it. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the bike in the comments below, and suggestions or comments for future videos are always appreciated. Thanks for watching.